In India's northeastern state of Manipur, a woman poet and activist has been on a hunger strike for more than a decade. She is demanding repeal of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, a law that gives sweeping powers to Indian security forces involved in counterinsurgency operations in the northeast and Kashmir regions. On the 11th anniversary of her fast, some prominent activists from across India have come together for a campaign seeking to bring her peaceful struggle to the national focus. FSRN's Bismillah Galani has the story. Our government is totally dumb, deep, blind. Irom Sharmila is 39 years old, but weighs just 77 pounds. She hasn't eaten or had anything to drink for the last 11 years. She survives on a liquid mixture of nutrients and drugs. She is force-fed through a nasal tube at a hospital where she is kept under detention. Sharmila began her fast to protest Armed Forces Special Powers Act in November 2000 when Indian security forces killed 10 civilians in her hometown of Malom. She says she will end it only after the law is revoked. It is very intolerable to me to see laws like this. The armed forces are supposed to be our protectors. Why should then they abuse their powers? It is very shocking. Very shocking. But the government remains unmoved. A group of activists is now trying to mobilize public support for Shamila's struggle. They recently marched through 11 states in northern and western India, raising awareness about the law and their reasons for opposing it. Faisal Khan is coordinator of the National Alliance of People's Movements. The main purpose of this campaign is to make the people of India aware of what Sharmila is fighting for and to make them realize the dangers of laws like this. People of Kashmir in the Northeast know that this is an inhumane law because they've been its victims. But the rest of India doesn't know, and we wanted people in other parts of the country to feel the pain of living under such laws. The Armed Forces Special Powers Act, or AFSPA, was first introduced in 1958 to curb separatist movements in India's northeastern states. It was later applied to Kashmir after an armed insurgency against Indian rule broke out in the region. The law gives security forces wide powers to search and arrest without warrants and to even shoot a person on mere suspicion of being a militant. It also gives them legal immunity for their actions. Human rights groups say it has led to an alarming increase in human rights abuses. Bina Lakshmi Nepram is the founder of Manipur Women Gun Survivors Network. It has not achieved anything except that it has given uh, the Indian Armed Forces the license to kill, torture, maim, rape anyone. Army is there in our villages, our towns, in a house, in a marketplace. And an Armed Forces Special Park is a blanket call. Do what you want and we will protect you. It has created more militancy, more anguish and more anger in the minds and hearts of people. But the government of India continues to turn a blind eye to this. In 1995, a government-appointed review committee recommended that the act be repealed. Rights groups like Amnesty International and the United Nations Human Rights Committee have also urged the Indian government to scrap the law. Even some ministers in the central government say that the law at least needs an overhaul. But the Indian Army has strongly resisted the attempts to even amend it. Faisal Khan of the National Alliance of People's Movement says the army must not be allowed to influence political decisions in a democracy. The army has complicated the problem rather than solving it. Even if we don't care about the people in Kashmir and Manipur and leave them to die, we must not forget that the law poses a serious threat to peace and democracy in this country, and the army knows it well. It negates everything that a democracy stands for. How can we tolerate such a law in Gandhi's land? 
Had he been alive, he would have been the first to protest. The activists are also collecting signatures from all over India in support of their demand for revocation of the law. They say they will present the signatures to the President of India on December 10, International Human Rights Day. Bismillah Gilani, Free Speech Radio News, New Delhi.